Watch this bit. This is good. Hello and welcome to another Atari VCS vlog. The real news like this is being kept off the headlines these days. The hilarity continues as the royal family are tearing themselves apart in a bid to stay relevant in 2020. The tabloids are confusing bad weather as climate change. And actors, clowns and madmen take turns at running the planet. So you better go back to your bars, your temples, your massage parlours. And make sure you like this video, comment below, subscribe and click on the bell for notifications as it's left to me to bring you the real news that really matters. Yes, Atari VCS have been at Cesspool 2020. Uh, I made a video earlier in the week about their latest update and that sort of thing. Obviously they had lots of hopes and I expected them to be showing off something about the console that showed us there would be gameplay and show us the console working properly. And they had three, three or four days is it? They were there, as you can see from this picture, they were there from Monday, but well, they, that was late on Monday. But the whole CES thing started on Tuesday and I think it went up to Friday and they still managed to show absolutely nothing. Well, they did show off a whole load of baggies and you know, different coloured baggies here containing God knows what. I think uh, maybe it was uh, you know, for their suppliers uh, on the way in. I'm getting across the fact that they're not exactly on the level with this and that they're you know, smoking rather dubious substances if they think that we're believing that they say anything they say is correct. But before I get into some of their main pictures, let's just have a, a bit of fun at their expense uh, with some of the comments on this one, which are great. Uh, and as you can see, actually, uh, look there, where you know, where you'd normally comment, uh, it's only giving me the option to share, not to comment. And as you can see from the top where it says share, save, suggest edits, I doubt they'll want any edits from me, because they have blocked me from their page. Yeah, they've got 25,000 people liking the page. And they've blocked me from it, so I can't comment on it. Oh, what a shame. Well, I can comment this way. So, yeah, stuff you, Atari. Well, the, you're not the real Atari. You know, Like people say, not my president, not my prime minister. You're not my Atari. My Atari gave me the 2600 in the sort of late 70s, early 80s when I had one. And playing video pinball, Pac-Man for, yeah, it wasn't great. E.T. the Extraterrestrial. Ooh, magic game. Anyway... This is not my Atari. And yes, it proves that no matter how much you zoom in on the Facebook screen, you can't get rid of that damn chat box at the bottom that, that anyone with a brain, they never use it. Just looking at some of the comments there, we've got Sebastian Rambos says, well, bubble wrap is certainly fun. And you have it in three colours. Well done. Colin Myers says, don't let these fools rush, y'all. Ship when it's ready. And John Rudd, at this point, you can't reasonably call it rushing them. Even turtles and snails are marvelling at how slow this is going. <laughs> Brilliant. Meanwhile, it escalated quickly when Gary M. Davis says, please ship them before I die. Hashtag early backer. And Andy Blakely says, can you give an exact date when you will die? Ooh. Nathan Face asks, is one of those mine? Well, Alex replies, well, it looks like enough for six people. I'd rather have them send them out to us than be showing them off. Andy Blakely says, I don't think you want a working prototype instead of the final one that's coming shortly. And Alex wisely replies, you mean if it comes. I have a feeling we'll be seeing a delay. No shit. And here's where we get a very important part of the Atari VCS trip to Las Vegas, Nevada for Cesspool 2020. Can you spot what's wrong with this picture? I, I wouldn't have done until someone pointed it out, but it says HyperX and Kingston Technology Company Incorporated. Where does it say Atari? <laughs> Well, yeah, I don't know whether you can make it out on this particular picture, but you can see, obviously, there the uh, supposed Atari VCS. Uh, the clear plastic one, whatever it was called. Uh, and there's a, well, there's a circuit board in the middle uh, inside it. But uh, uh, but you can see, if you can see it on the uh, little things there in front of it, it says Atari VCS, Kingston, 16 gigabyte eMMC, and so on and so on. So, yeah, the memory inside, it's all Kingston-based. So, basically, Atari have not paid for a stand at Cesspool 2020. They just they just turned up and poached a bit of space on the Kingston desk. You think if they had a, a big product to show off, they would be, you know, forking out the cash for like a proper a proper exhibit, a proper exhibit area. Got a little exhibit area you're working on? Something to show off to the people? No? No. You haven't. And so it would be very interesting if they got themselves into a bit of deep trub just for that. <laughs> it's, it's the comments that really make it in a lot of cases. Matt Daly says, 
quite a bit different from the Atari booth at CES of years past. Robert John Solander says, again with the hardware, your fans wanted to see software, games, correct spelling. I think the spelling is something which will come up in a bit. It's not the fact he's edited this post that he didn't spell games properly last time, but we'll get to that later. Yep, in television, beat you this time. And people are questioning him, but he says, I haven't seen one game. Robert Albrecht says in television beat nothing with that glorified touch device. I'm actually looking forward to the Amico. It does look really good, quite a lot of fun. We've seen games from them, we've not seen anything from Atari. But McGwill counters this, saying, No, 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 we fans want to see newer Atari hardware first, and we've been waiting for it for more than 25 years. Games will come afterwards. I think games come at the same time. If you don't have any games, you won't sell bloody consoles. Look at the mess with Xbox going on at the moment, when they say that they'll have no first-party exclusives in the first year of their bloody new console when it comes out, making absolutely no reason to buy an Xbox Series X. Dave says, how do you know the hardware will be worth dropping $400 on until we see game footage? But McGuire says, no, 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 first it can be $249. Well, even still, that's still a sizable amount of money. That's, you know, that could be someone's you know, electricity bills for a few months. Then I know precisely what hardware is inside and all the services it can offer as a, a small factor PC. I also know very well the kind of games the Vega 3 can handle. In the meantime, the Intellivision is basically your own smartphone disguised as a console and plugged into the TV. Even if that was the case, at least it's playing some games. Rick Whitford says, two years and not a lot. We backers are all screwed. <laughs> There's more chance of a blowjob from the Pope. Bill Gross says, I certainly don't want that Pope game you're pitching. Maybe it's one of those, like old Atari 2600 games, beat them and eat them. You know, all those kind of things that, that came out in the 80s. It certainly didn't grace the shelves of WH Smith's. That's for sure. And I think you could probably get them mail order. We can play them online now. But yeah, some very dodgy X-rated games there. Yep, <laughs> there's the Pope. <laughs> yep, suffering a bit of a, a hat malfunction. Meanwhile, Len Stey says, and then if they ship it a month too soon, you'll say what a POS it is. Piece of shit. Besides, if they don't have games for it yet, what's the rush? Well, you think at this point they would have games. I mean, they did have Tempest 4000 running on it, right? Right? Uh, we'll skip over Chris Wilson's bad spelling and get to Paul Slocum. So the demonstration Atari VCS models that people can see on the CES floor aren't even going to be hooked up. Colin Clang replies, well, it's probably just a Linux PC in there. And Ilky Can says, probably be the knockoffs from China out already. And spot on, Ryan Danay says, I guess that explains why Atari was not registered at CES. Exactly why they leached off Kingston. And Andrew Anderson says... <laughs> Sneak peek at another see-through Raspberry Pi case. Damn right. Ben rightly calls it <laughs> Atari Virtual Console Scam. Adam Kramer says, after last time's fiasco, I can't blame anyone for calling bullshit. Hook it up and give us a playable something. Pierre brings us a despairing baby. Tonello has Mr Bean <laughs> checking his watch to find out when the damn thing's coming. Beto, I want my money back. Well, Len comes back with... Well, if you bought the Collector's Classics, I may be willing to buy it from you for what you paid. Well, Beto, I would certainly take him up on that because, you know, he'll be getting not very much at the end of all this. And here's a good one. The next one up is from Tuesday evening, which was probably morning in uh, America time. Uh, showing off at CES 2020, which colorway is your favourite? What? Colorway? Co what? Well, I can safely play the video for this. I mean, I would show you the sound, well, play the sound, but there's certainly no sound on this anyway. So, apart from just background hum. So, we'll just, you know, leave that blank. It's just, yeah, so you can see, you know, again, just the shell, the controller. Please do not touch it, says there on the red card. If you can't touch it, how are you supposed to know whether, you know, whether it's going to work? You don't. Cameron says the retro wood look is the best, and Atari say, well, you can pre-order it. Well, yeah, you can pre-order it, but you'll, give, you'll be giving them almost $400. I looked at the website, and yeah, $400 is the one that they're pushing. Do not click on it. Daniel Nyblock says, wow, and I thought it was only going to be available in Invisible. <laughs> and Jason Kleiman says, I've been following you guys for years, and I still don't truly know what the system does. Why is that? With 10 likes on that comment... Atari say, hi Jason, I'm sorry to hear this. The Atari VCS is a unique system. Yeah, all the other systems actually exist. And we hope you'll take the time to learn about this project and see if it's a good fit for you. Don't, don't. Visit our websites and blog, etc. Don't bother. And I've just seen 
Their medium link includes an at symbol in it. You don't have an at symbol in a frigging website address. They just have absolutely no idea what they're doing. But Jason replied, and Atari didn't reply further, that's for sure. So it's a system that plays Roblox games and other types of games made by regular people. I think this is way beyond something I first believed it to be. Seven says you've got to do more reading, but, but Jason continues, I read the sections that explain the system. Most of the answers sound like something a, a double-talking politician would say. <laughs> There's nothing straightforward saying anything about if there'll be full-scale mainstream games for it. Please share the link to that if I missed it. Meanwhile, another Jason says, the few things I've gathered over the last two years are it's going to play classic games like a Raspberry Pi, but somehow not really like a Raspberry Pi. Number two, it runs a Linux-based system with an AMD processor. Three, I can install and run Windows on it if I want to. Four, it may or may not have some new games coming out for it. And that's about it. I totally agree that a lot of the info sounds like double talk. Meanwhile, Gleb says, Atari VCS, could you share a video with any gameplay? Well, of course they can't because they haven't got any. <laughs> Brian Umholt says, my favourite colour is free. Mm. Daniel Edward Power says, I got E.T. for the 2600. <laughs> Michael G says, oh, are you going to plug it in? I mean, CES started yesterday, so I'm waiting. Where will you be? I also went to the, the interactive map, typed in Atari, and the only booth to show up was the guys who make the mechanical pong. Tommy replies, well, let me know if they reply to you, because that's a perfectly legitimate question. If my previous experiences are to go by, then I wouldn't count on getting a response, unfortunately. But, oh, they didn't respond! Saying we're off-site this year, meeting with a select number of press and partners. We showed off some gameplay this morning, actually. Where? If you had gameplay to show, you'd stick it on this friggin' page. Goran says, I've never seen such a device take so long to come out, despite it's not even next-gen. Do you have any links about how it plays and, and what features it has to offer the gamers? As I gave up on following the, to the birth on this little console of choice from the once mighty Atari of the late 80s. Meanwhile, Stefan issues a stupid post award, even though... <sighs> His post is most questionable. Dude, there are water bottles on Indiegogo that have taken longer to come out. Do you have any clue what it takes to develop something like this from scratch? Do you have any idea what kind of chip is in there? Do you understand Jack's about any of this? Wow. Michael Counters, I've been in the hardware and software industry since 1995, so I can say I do have some experience in this department. And that experience tells me that this isn't how a successful project is achieved. So what's your experience in the industry? I mean, it's day two of CES. They still haven't posted a video showing it playing anything. They are months from release. Time to show us what you've got. Tommy backs him up, but Daniel comes back with, didn't you see that amazing video of it booting at Windows? <laughs> That's, I'm coming to that in a bit, actually. And then we get into the last few bits here, and I won't go into too much detail in the comments here, because it's, it's pretty much the same as what you've already heard. And as you can see there, you know, can you play? Well, we've got the Atari Vault, Hoops Clash, and Tempest 4000. Well, we haven't really got Tempest 4000, because... The makers of Tempest 4000 said they'd never been asked to write a, a Linux version for the Atari VCS. And the stream, breakouts, uh, centipede crystal castles, but... <laughs> Asteroid. They haven't got asteroids, they've got asteroid. Yeah. Mmm. It's got an S on it, as lots of people have pointed out. Yars Revenge is Y-A-R-S apostrophe. Not Y-A-R apostrophe S. This is Atari. This is their game. And they can't even get the friggin' spelling right. And one guy pointed out, well, perhaps, you know, it's Asteroid because they can only afford one. And then, oh, wow, you've got, you got the sandbox that they keep bleating on about. Uh, the you know, YouTube app. Yeah, I've got YouTube on my phone. Chromium. Presumably that's the same as Chrome. Got that on my phone. Facebook, that's on my phone. Redbox, that's the... It's a rental service, film streaming service. Well, wow, you know, those are a dime a dozen. I, who cares? And then they've got four lots of blank. Then Antonio says, I think I can play Google Stadia. Well, by the time, if this ever does come out, by the time the VCS does come out, then Google Stadia will be long dead, I think. And that could literally be anything playing Fortnite on that TV. It's a bloody awful picture anyway. If you can see the picture close enough, then there's a man playing, supposedly, he's got a, a controller wired up, supposedly, to the Atari VCS, supposedly. We can't see whether or not it's actually plugged in. The TV could be hooked up to anything. Uh, he could be able to hooked up to a, a, a PC just off to the side playing Fortnite. There is no guarantee that that is actually playing Fortnite. And if it if it was, then they would try and silence us who are trying to point out the issues with it by showing it playing actual games, lo you know, loading them in, and also showing off some exclusives which they clearly haven't got. And you know, you can play you can play Fortnite on your phone. So why do you need to spend four hundred dollars on a, a silly little console that will do nothing else, seemingly, but play Fortnite? 
And you know, the old Atari VCS games, it's, uh, it's not happening, is it? And there's someone walking into shot there in the background. Stay classy. And then we get the pièce de résistance. It's the Atari VCS supposedly booting into Windows. Yeah, if you have a yeah, if you have a PC, you can boot into Windows. It, now it seems, according to this, if you have an Atari VCS, you can also boot into Windows. So yeah, you have a, a second device that boots into Windows. How useful is that? Uh, sign in. So with what? What keyboard? Where's the mouse? You've got a exactly. Where's 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 if he's holding a controller there? Well, we went a bit blank then. If he's holding the controller there, where is the where's the mouse being plugged into? It's just it's just none of this makes any sense. How did he type in the password? Uh, and now he's clicking on the Epic Games launcher and got this this camera work of theirs is bloody awful. <laughs> They're showing yeah we wanted to see games. They're showing us more of a bloody cupboard than they are of any games. Uh, yeah, it shows us, uh, well, this, the PC it's connected up to on the TV shows us the Epic Game Store and shows us Fortnite. Wow. Oh, God. That's it. That's the whole thing. So, yeah. So that's the uh, Atari at Cesspool 2020. How exciting. And I don't care, Facebook, about any top videos from what you want me to watch. I'll see my videos on YouTube. Thank you very much. Perhaps if you actually allowed videos to be monetized on Facebook, I might put them on Facebook, but you don't, so stuff you. Zuck sucks. Anyway, in the meantime, please like this video and share it with your friends and subscribe if you haven't already and click on the little bell to get all the notifications and cue Genesis.